Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Podborsky and this is the presentation of our ACM Multimedia Systems Conference demo track paper with the title Cloud Rendering Based Volumetric Video Streaming System for Mixed Reality Services. In this talk I would like to speak about a cloud rendering system for volumetric content. So let's talk about volumetric content first. Since there are different representations how volumetric video can be constructed. So we are using a mesh-based volumetric video. So our video consists of a sequence of meshes with the corresponding sequence of textures uh, which when rendered together result in a volumetric video which you can then use in your scene and have full control of. In order to prepare the content uh, we take those uh, textures and encode them as a video using for example H.264 video encoder and we do the same for the sequence of meshes where so we use a mesh encoder to compress the data so we have then two elementary streams which we then multiplex together into the single mp4 file which then has two tracks for example one for video textures and one for meshes of course there might be a third track representing the audio of that sequence as well and on the clients and device when you would like to render your volumetric video you have to do those uh, steps in reverse order and the biggest problem currently is that so far there is actually no hardware decoders available which can deal with volumetric video and uh, of course there is some effort in MPEG uh, utilizing the video uh, decoders available on your clients and device I'm speaking here about video based point cloud compression work which is really good however this still has some problems because uh, you have to uh, run several decoder instances in parallel which also might be a bit tricky, so it might have some synchronization issues, it might have some issues when one of the decoders drops a frame, and also um, if you deal with multiple volumetric objects on a client device then it's gonna be really complicated if you use for example just three decoder instances for a single um, video uh, so this doesn't scale very much. So there's simply not enough processing power on mobile devices nowadays to, to deal with the really complex scenes with many objects and so on. And even though the work done is pretty impressive, the bit rates of, of well, compressed uh, volumetric video objects is still too high. So those problems need to be solved somehow. And um, one of the solutions which we actually I uh, would like to emphasize in this talk is based on the cloud, right? So uh, w when we speak about the cloud, we actually have like unlimited power. So we can actually shift all the processing into the cloud server and it can be really powerful. So we do all the volumetric video processing, the multiplexing, decoding, rendering. So everything done on the, uh, can be done on the cloud and the client would then send some control data to the cloud, for example, tell uh, that it changes the viewport or it interacted with some uh, objects and uh, after the scene is finally rendered taking into account that received control data uh, 2D video stream is sent back to the client so the client at the end just needs to decode a simple 2D video and uh, still has control over the scene uh, while sending this control data and controlling the rendering process on, on the cloud side. Okay, enough talking. Let's go more into the detail of the implementation. And I would like to show you this figure here, which shows how all of this is implemented in our system. And in this figure, you can see here we have a server part. Uh, on the left side, we have a client part. Let's talk about the server first. It's uh, in our current implementation. We actually have a cloud rendering library, which is actually a SDK, uh, which runs on Linux, Windows, and macOS. And we are using this cloud rendering library. We have implemented native plugin for Unity, which you can embed uh, into your Unity application. And in our Unity application, we have implementation of this volumetric video player which takes the mp4 file with two different tracks, video track and mesh track, then it demultiplex video and mesh, then it 
decodes those two and renders it to the scene and the camera which is rendering the scene is then rendering to the render texture and that render texture is then pu is pushed into the library and inside the library we're using the GStreamer framework which is really powerful multimedia processing uh, framework and uh, below here you can see the media pipeline uh, the render texture goes into the app source which is the uh, source uh, element for the media pipeline in GStreamer we convert the texture to for a YUV format to prepare it for encoding and then it's encoded move to WebRTC block which is basically creating the RTP stream and send it back to the client and for the data stream we are using WebSocket so we have in the library we have a WebSocket server which accepting client incoming client connections and uh, we have like object registration so the application in unity can say for example with what kind of objects the scene has and allows to control uh, those are registered in some pool and controlled and the client basically has a control of those objects and then we have some prediction engine which does the prediction of the viewport etc and on the client side we have uh, implemented two different clients we have a web browser based implementation which is a simple JavaScript um, like a web browser page and then we also have a HoloLens implementation and uh, the architecture itself looks similar so we need of course the WebRTC uh, part which receives this uh, bitstream uh, video stream I mean uh, decodes it and renders and we have a WebSocket connection which deals with all this data stream, data traffic, signaling data, user interaction data, it's, and so on. Of course, everything comes with a price. And in our case, the highest price we have to pay is the motion to photon latency. And this is the time between when the client first requested the server to change the scene until this change is really visible on the client's end device. And this has to be as low as possible because high values of motion to photon latency are crucial and will destroy your quality of experience completely. So our good friends in order to cope with this problem are of course hardware video encoding. So we use NVIDIA encoding API to encode video on the hardware. We use WebRTC for ultra low latency streaming. We also do experiments with 5G as well since it also has some nice features regarding low latency and we also have to do some viewport prediction so we have to predict the future position of the user even before it happened and on the client side post rendering correction methods can be used in order to make a video look better and uh, just to emphasize how do we measure the motion to photon latency for that we created a web client application and a console application for the server and the idea is as, follow, as follows. So the client establishes the data stream connection to the server. After this, the peer-to-peer -peer connection is established and the server starts streaming the video. In this case, we're going to just stream the simple bars. And then the measurement process actually starts. So the client requests the texture color to change. And as soon as this data goes out of the client, it starts the timer. So this data goes to the server, changes the color, goes back, and as soon as the green texture is detected on the client side, we stop the counter and measure our motion to photon latency. And I'm gonna show the implementation of this just in a second. Okay, let's move to the demonstration itself. So as you can see here, the project we are working on is kind of huge already so we have um, inside the project uh, the cloud rendering library implementation with all the modules then we have for uh, embedding to the unity we have a unity plugin um, we have uh, a console application which we use for uh, motion to button latency measurements as I explained in the previous slide and obviously we have uh, Unity application itself embedding this uh, cloud rendering library 
as a DLL and uh, we have also several uh, web clients. I'm going to speak about the uh web client today. So all of the web clients are using a split rendering module, uh, which is our JavaScript module, which you can embed to your website. And uh, let me connect to, to the server and show it how it looks like. So we uh, are going to use we're going to use the telecom server, which is also connected to 5G network. Okay, so on this uh, machine here, um, we have, uh, as you can see here, NVIDIA encoders uh, plugins for GStreamer enabled. And our application, the Unity application, is compiled uh, in the unit, as a Unity project, looks like this. So if you execute it, it starts with the main scene, um, basically where you can configure your application before you start the streaming session. So you can select several scenes in the case we are interested right now in the volumetric player. So you can select your source file. In this case, we have a Josh sequence uh, and set some parameters and then click start. So you can see the video here. So you can actually also on the server side navigate uh, through the scene yourself. But we are more interested in how to use this uh, from the client side on your client PC, right? So I'm not using 5G here. I'm just connected to a Wi-Fi. Let's go to um, to the Chrome browser, for example, here. Connect to we go to the HTTP uh, website loc located on this telecom server as well. As you can see here, this is the 2D client implementation, how this website looks like. And here you can select the server which you would like to connect to. And then you just click connect. Now the connection is established and you can see the volumetric video. So you can navigate through it, so you can rotate the volumetric object. Uh, you can drag and drop. So this is a kind of 3GS simpli simplified uh, view of the scene and using WASD controls you can actually fly around and uh, see the object from any perspective you like. Uh, so as you can see here it's quite responsive so I kind of can move right, left, forth, back, up, down, then I can rotate the object and so on. So this is actually how it works. Okay, a 2D video client is a really nice thing to have, but what we're actually really targeting at the end is an augmented reality application. So we have started to experiment with the HoloLens, and in this short video here, you can see the first prototype working. So it will render the 2D video on this plane, which is put into the AR environment, so you can freely grab and uh, drag and drop this plane in, in your viewing space. And then we remove the background, so the object um, seems to be not rendered on the plane in this case. And then if you walk around, you see it from different angles. So the camera view on the server side is doing exactly the same as, you, as it did and for the 2D video client as well. So the quality, as you can see here, is not the best, So, but we are improving it. So it's the first prototype implementation that you see here. And uh, we also have started to work on WebXR uh, clients, which is which are doing the similar things, but in the web browser. The next thing I would really like to discuss with you uh, is how to measure the motion, motion to photon latency, because this is one of the most important metrics uh, for such system. Okay, so for the motion to photon latency measurements, I would use Amazon Elastic Cloud instance. Uh, let me quickly connect to it. Here we can execute our console application. And now we go to HHIDMOD, which is a domain also pointing to the same web uh, server located on the same instance. Connect, uh, go to the latency measurement page. Select HHI demo D running on port 8080, connect to it. So now we see we connected and so we received this black uh, bars. And now, as I explained in the previous slides, the client will send 
control data to the server to change the color and wait until this finally rendered on the screen and then stop the counter and it will take 50 independent measurements. So let's try it out. So, as you can see here, in this example, we run 50 independent measurements and we have a motion to bottom latency measured on average about 68.45 milliseconds. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your patience and please stay healthy. Bye-bye.